What's up YouTube, it's your boy Swing Shots back again with another video. This week we're going to be walking through my workflow in Lightroom. Uh, so I'll just be recording my screen, kind of talking through some of the things that I'm doing. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started. through my workflow kind of giving you guys some tips as far as how I use my rating system uh, how I use presets to kind of speed up the editing process um, so without further ado let's get started uh, so we just actually imported these images into Lightroom I'm come here and we're going to be working on these green images here uh, in this brown too uh, so we actually just imported these into Lightroom and the first thing that I would do uh, I like to put these images inside a collection over here on the left hand side uh, so I would select all of these images I would hold down shift or command on your Mac as you can see all my images are selected and then I would basically drag those images inside of the collection set that I would want my images um, the advantage of using the collection set it helps you stay organized helps you be able to find those images uh, the next thing that I would do I would come over here to my keywords and I'll just add some keywords here so I already have added brown top green tube sunglasses and I'll do uh, let's say downtown uh, the advantage of using uh, keywords um, when you have uh, 20, 20, 30, 40,000 images and uh, you want to go through and find some specific images, whether it's somebody wearing a dress, whether it's a specific location, whether it's a specific type of food. Uh, if you put in your keywords and search those keywords, all the images that you have associated with those keywords will come up and that's just another way, an easy way for you to kind of go through and find the images that you need. So now that we have our keywords on, we have our images in our collections, we're now going to go in and actually assign a star system to each photo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my develop. And I'm just going to kind of go through and I'm going to hit my right bracket, which is going to give it a one star if I like the image. And then from now we'll go in again and kind of narrow it down and I'll give it another star. And those are the images that I'll be focusing on editing today. Uh, so really you can give it anywhere from one to a five star. Uh, some people like to use these flags down here. Some people like to use a color system down here. Uh, just whatever works best for you. So really develop your own style of editing, your own workflow. Uh, but for my sake, what I find easy is to use the rating system so let's get started this first image here as you can see I hit the right bracket and that's going to give it a one star rating let's say for instance I made a mistake I didn't want to give it that one star rating I'll just click the left bracket and as you can see it decreased the rating to take it away so let's just go through here I won't go through all the images let's maybe go through maybe 20 uh, that I kind of like uh, and we'll just kind of go through here and we will do that uh, what I'm looking for is the image of focus uh, what's the composition look like? Um, I don't want to select too many different of the same images. I like to get a variety, whether it's walking, whether it's standing, uh, whether it's full body, uh, whether it's three quarters like this image here, or uh, maybe a close up. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to go through and select maybe five or 10 more images. I really like that image there. Uh, walking away image, that's cool. Uh, and I want to get a few uh, close ups. So I'm going to get a few close ups as well kind of narrow it down from there. Let's see. So I think we have enough selected. So what I want to do, I want to see the images that I selected. So what I will do, I will come down here to when you say filter and I will click my one star. And it's going to filter to all of my one stars inside of that folder. I don't have my folder selected. So you can go over here, as you can see, I'm going to go to shade locations i put all of those images in this downtown tool over here and now i'm going to filter to my one star and that's going to make it much easier for me to find the images that i just selected uh, for that session so we actually are working on this green set here so as you can see these are all the one images that i selected one star images and typically from here i usually give it another two stars uh, to three depending on what I'm doing and I usually narrow it down to three to five images that I'm going to be working with uh, to edit or to send back to the client so let's go ahead and narrow it down to three images um, like I said I like to do a variety whether it's close-up walking uh, three quarters so let's go ahead and select I saw one earlier that I like I'm going to do this one I like that one I'm going to do close-up and then let's do one full body 
kind of walk in and show you my book. So now I want to go in and look at my two stars, and these are the three that I'll be working on getting in today. So let's go ahead and filter to my two stars. And as you can see, you have one, two, three, and these are the three images that I'm going to be working on. Uh, so there's two ways to do this. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is actually using a preset. Uh, presets are basically your style of editing. I created some presets that I kind of use on a daily basis, as you can see. Over here on the left-hand side, I have a number of presets. I do have a link in my bio where you can kind of go in and, and buy some of my presets if you like what you see. Uh, but really, it's a base. It's your style of editing for certain images. And like I said, it's your style, but it's also a base. So you can actually go in and edit a preset as well. So for the sake of this first image, let's click on my preset here. And that is what it does before and after. Before and after. As you can see, it takes it from a warm to a cool. Uh, for this image, I'm actually liking a warmer tone, so I'm gonna go in and kind of edit my preset. Um, so I'm gonna bring the warm tones back up a little bit to there. And I really wanna bring some detail back into her hair, into her braids. So I'm gonna bump up my shadows and bump up the blacks just a tad bit. Um, and then I'm going to straighten my image and maybe crop it down just a little bit. Boom. So that's before and after with the preset. I kind of want to bring down the highlights because as you can see, it's kind of overblown here. So we'll bring down the highlights just a tad bit here. Yeah. And one trick you can use with your shadows and highlights, if you turn on both of these selections out up here in the Instagram, it will show you if something is too dark or too outblown. So let's say for instance, my shadows were here. As you can see, it turns blue when it's something that's too, too dark and it's not picking up any detail at all. So you can actually bring it up to where it shows just a tad bit of blue, as you can see, or you can just bring it up even more. It's turning with your preference on uh, what you want to do. So it's easy to just turn those on and off. Uh, so I like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually clean up now some of these spots on the ground just to kind of clean up the, the image. Um, to zoom in, you want to control and plus. Hold space bar and that'll actually let you select the image and drag down. So I'm going to just clean this up just a tad. Boom. I want to get that cursor right over it, not too big and not too small, just kind of right over the image. I want to line those up. Perfect. So now you have the edit. Let's zoom back out. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this is the before, as you guys can see. This is the after. Um, I kind of like what I see there. Uh, real natural tone. Um, if you want to zoom in and kind of see if she has any blemishes on her face, any skin retouching that you need to do. Uh, this is not a headshot. It's not a portrait shot. So it's not a lot of detail in the face. Um, so I'm really not focusing on the face. It's more so about the outfit and the entire picture. Um, so I think this is, this is a great image. Now I'm going to go to the next image here. And I'm going to edit this one actually as if I'm not going to use a preset. It's just the right image that I'm going to kind of edit. So the first thing that I would do, it would come down here and I would put, remove my chromatic aberrations and enable my profile settings. So it just kind of makes it more natural to the lens and the camera that I'm using. I'm using the Sigma Art 35 millimeter F1.4. Uh, and then we just kind of come up here. We're going to kind of start at the top and work our way down. Um, so white balance, you can use as shy, auto, daylight, cloudy. I typically adjust my white balance in camera, uh, so I don't necessarily have to do it here. Uh, so let's just go ahead, I'm gonna touch, I'm going to bring down my exposure. Uh, one way you can, if you wanna get a natural white balance and you have a white card, if you have something white in the image, you can click this little dropper and let's find something white. It looks fairly white and this is gonna give it a really natural white balance. So look, that's the white balance. So we're going to bring this down some here. I like to have a little contrast in my images. Uh, once again, I want to bring down the highlights just a little bit. They bring back some detail in the jacket. As you can see, you can see the green start to come back in. Uh, shadows look pretty well. Um, really just a preference if you like dark shadows, if you like them more punched. Uh, so I'll bring the shadows up, bring the blacks down just a tad. As you can see, the blacks, it kind of like softens the image just a little bit. The more you bring it up, more detail. But I'm actually going to bring it down just to add a little bit, offsetting the shadows. So this is before so far, and this is the after. Going to add the clarity a little bit. Just a tad bit of clarity, not much. 
Um, dehaze, as you can see, can really affect the image. Uh, so if you mess with dehaze, you don't want to actually do too much or too little. I typically leave it at zero. Uh, vibrance, I want to add some vibrance to the image compared to the last one. So we're going to pump up the vibrance. And we're going to add some saturation as well. So as you can see, it's very oversaturated, very much so oversaturated. But here are some of the things that I do. Uh, just a real quick, simple, what I actually mess with the turn, the tone curve or the RGB. Uh, I actually mess with the hue and saturation a lot. So on the darker skin tone, you really want to focus on the oranges for the saturation and the luminance. So as you can see, she's very orange, very oversaturated. So I'm gonna come down here for my saturation and I'm gonna click this little symbol here. And it's gonna hover over. Whatever color you hover over, as you can see on the saturation, you can kind of see it being highlighted. And that's kind of gonna show you what color is actually being affected when you actually hold down your left click and you gotta bring that back. So as you see, I'm making her skin tone look more natural the more I do that there. So this is before, this is after. And another trick for brown skinned people, dark skinned people is your luminance. Uh, so sometimes skin can get fairly dark. Um, so if you really want to bring some the more of the natural color in, if you bring that luminance down on orange, you can see it's gonna turn on skin very chocolatey, very unnatural. Um, so, I mean, from the before and after, I think it looks fairly well. I'm gonna pump up the luminance just a little more. It kind of pumps up the highlights in her face, as you can see. And I'm not liking, although I like the warm colors, I'm not liking the, the yellow saturation in it. So I'm, act, I'm gonna click on my saturation again. I'm gonna cover over, as you can see, it's affecting the yellow. I'm just gonna bring the yellows down just a tad so it's a more natural white background in the back. So let's go ahead and zoom into her skin. Once again, she's pretty flawless. It's not a beauty edit, so I'm not going in and kind of retouching the skin. I will if I have to. No blemishes there. Everything looks pretty well. So this is the before. This is the after. And I'm pretty happy uh, with that there. So as you can see, this is actually, with the preset, this is actually my edit that I just did live here with you guys. So this is the preset. My edit, oh sorry about that. My edit, and you can kind of see the difference here. Now, a cool thing you can do if you if you kind of torn between two different editing styles, one thing you can do is duplicate the image. So you would right click and you would click create virtual copy. And what that would do, it would copy that exact image. So you can now see what that image would look like with this actual preset on it. So all you have to do is select this image, hit control, and that's gonna select that image there, and you will hit sync. What Sync going to do is going to put all of those changes that you made into that image into this one. Uh, I usually never click the local brush or uh, gradient filters, radiant filters, because they're all different for each image. So if I took a blemish off her face in one image, that blemish might not be in the same spot on another image. So I don't want to have that selected. But pretty much everything else uh, you want to have selected outside of crop and spot removal. Let's say, for instance, I had the cropping image. And I might not want that same crop in another image. So it's gonna take you more time to kind of go back in and uncrop that image. So you wanna make sure it's not selected. So let's hit synchronize. And now this image before now has this preset on it. So as you can see, they have the same preset. And you can kind of see side by side, this is the preset and that's my image. So it's really preference. I really like both of them. This one gives you more pop. I think it's more of a, uh, uh, a editorial look. And this one's a more a more natural look, so it gives you that style to do. Now, let's say for instance, you like this preset and you want to apply this preset to all the images that you selected. What you want to do is hit down Shift or Command on a Mac, and you're going to hit Synchronize. And once again, it's going to apply that preset to all of your images. Images. So now you have this one, you have this one, which I would cut down to here, straighten it a little bit. See what that looks like. Um, I kind of like the curves. You see how it's playing with the curves in this image. I like the curves in it. So it's showing up curves. I want to straighten it just a tad bit. And then I want to go ahead and remove all of these little leaves. I know her face is flawless, so I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to pump up the shadows just a tad bit on this one. The whites just a tad bit more. I'm very happy with that. That's before, that's after. So now all of these images actually have the preset on it. 
So here I'm gonna bump it down just a tad. Bump the whites and highlight it down to bring back some detail in the jacket and the blazer. Uh, let's just say I wanted to change the color of the blazer actually. I'll change the color of the green. So as you see it, the green is selected. Since I selected hue, the green is selected. As you can see, that's between green and yellow. I want to affect the green, so I want to make sure green is highlighted. So now that the green is highlighted, I left click. And as you can see, I'm changing the color of the green. And it's affecting the whole image. So that's a quick way to kind of affect some colors. That gives it even more pop, you know? So different ways you can do it. Uh, so now that I have the images that I want, I want to export, I will go to file. I'll have my images selected. I'll go to file, export. Um, really choosing a folder. I always choose a specific folder. I use the export to my external hard drive with the filing system that I kind of use inside of my Lightroom so everything is nice and uniform. Um, I typically use a lot of my images for stock photography. So there are a lot of large files that people like to use for either billboards uh, and large prints, magazines. So this is a very large image. I use width, time, height, or by image size. And that's 60 by 16. And that 40 by 16 on the height, 300 megapixels per inch. Very large file. I don't limit my file size to 100K, 100% quality. Um, that's typically what I export to. Uh, before my stock images, if I'm just doing it for a client, I would come back in here and I would do megapixels. And I typically do five megapixels. Uh, you really can't see a difference between five and seven. So it's a little bit smaller file than the previous uh, 60 by 60, 16 and 40 by 16. Uh, so it just gives you some options on, on file size and how you're using the files basically. Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, that's my workflow. Um, if you like what you see, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Please feel free if you'd like to see anything else, any suggested topics, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but until next time, do.